good afternoon this uh, staphylococcal infection is the beginning of the chapters chapter 7 uh, systemic infections of the tissues various tissues so in the continuation of the skin and soft tissue and musculoskeletal system infection staphylococcus is probably the first organism otherwise also staphylococcus uh, is a very common ubiquitous organism which infects the humans in fact it is a commensal flora of the human body so whenever there is tissue which has got lower immunity is there it reaches there and causes trouble and the popular pyogenic organism this is one of the most popular pyogenic means the one which produces pus so staphylococcus especially the aureus is the most popular organism which causes pyogenic infections you must have seen a lot of times the the pus and the pus yellow thick viscid liquid which is known as pus you must have seen it is nothing but caused due to the fight between the immune cells and the staphylococcus and that the product that pus is the product of this fight so let us see what comes in the staphylococcal infections we will see systemical systematically with each slide about the staphylococcal infections and of course the staphylococcus organism organism infection and disease are related so we go that way you must have been taught the basic classification or if not taught it is easy we know uh, there is a grams reaction gram staining some are gram positive some are gram negative so this is one division gram positive gram negative another division is cocci and bacilli so actually i recommend all of you to learn nicely the morphological classification along with the brief description but then gram positive cocci gram negative cocci gram positive bacilli gram negative bacilli so this classification this division is only on the basis of gram staining and whether the organism is rod or a cocci then other forms are there say, say spirochetes spirella mycoplasma rickettsia actinomycetes mycoplasma mycobacteria so these is the morphological classification and we come according to that in the cocci the shape cocci you can go like this cocci bacilli like that so cocci can be gram positive so whatever gram positive cocci are there they are classified they are they are placed into two families micrococcaci and streptococci and the basis of the differentiation between these two families is the two 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 basis one is the catalyst test and another is the is the arrangement so that which is arranged in the in the groups of many or tetrad or clusters or a group of eight they are known as they are they are grouped in micrococcaci and these organisms are catalyst positive the others are arranged in chains and these organisms are catalyst negative and they are placed in the streptococci family this uh, finding founding these organisms in chain or cluster is because of the deficiency of partial deficiency of the separation enzyme so separation enzyme is relatively deficient that is why they do not separate and the next division of the bacteria is in the same plane then the chain generates and if in varying plane 
in three dimension then it they result into the the, the clusters so this is a very very brief fundamental introduction the catalyst test you will be shown in the practical classes otherwise it is a very simple test catalyst is an enzyme so by this test we see whether the organisms possess contain catalyst or not so if the organism contains catalyst it gives a reaction what is that reaction if 3% hydrogen peroxide h2o2 is brought in contact with the organism this acts on the hydrogen peroxide and liberates oxygen from the h2o2 so h2o2 converts into h2o and o2 and then the bubbles are there so whether you do on a slide on the culture plate or a tube adding of the hydrogen peroxide solution will gives rise to bubbles and that is known as catalyst test out of the two important families of the gram positive cocci the micrococcaci uh, encompasses two genera mainly micrococcus and staphylococcus micrococcus are skin commensals and otherwise also present at many other places but they are not associated mostly with the human infections their peculiarity mostly is that they are arranged in tetrads they are relatively larger in size 1 to 1.8 micrometer in size so leave aside the micrococcus species of the micrococcus family so out of the two important genera the micrococcus is not pathogenic staphylococcus is pathogenic so staphylococcus is the species of the gram positive cocci which are arranged in clusters we have already seen and the staphylococcus again has got variety of the organisms one of which is known as coagulase positive or the staphylococcus aureus because it produces an enzyme known as coagulase so this enzyme is a basis of coagulase test other species which do not produce coagulase they are known as coagulase negative staphylococci and they are relatively non pathogenic rarely pathogenic or you can call sometime them opportunistic so staphylococcus species again had got the varieties of the organism they will see in the next slides other names of the organism uh, of various species so the history of the staphylococcus and nomenclature the credit goes to two scientists alexander oxton in 1880 and rosen back in 1884 oxton gave the name staphylococcus staphylococcus is made up of two words staphyl meaning a grape like uh, the bunch like of the grapes and the cocos means berry shaped so uh, like the many grapes are are grouped are are hanging together uh, and the 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 grapes are not exactly grapes so they are they are berry shaped berries are more round than the grapes so very round uh, berries are hanging together berries are also dark colored berry so imagine dark colored berries in groups when you do the gram staining because they are gram positive and another is from the colonies on the nutrient agar or the blood agar golden yellow pigmentation of the colonies is there golden yellow that is why aureus aureus has, has come from aureum aureum is the 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 chemical name elemental name for the gold other species are we have seen in the earlier slides the classification the coagulose positive and coagulose negative so staphylococcus aureus is coagulose positive the other coagulose negatives are there which may have the pigments of various colors so white colored pigment is staphylococcus albus the the citrus lemon yellow color 
pigmented staphylococcia, staphylococcus citrius. More closely, we will see now the staphylococcus aureus infections, the most notorious pyogenic infectious gram positive cocci, and a more, more common organism also for the human infections, staphylococcus aureus. We have seen a lot of characters of the Staphylococcus aureus, more, little more characters. So we know it is characterized positive, coagulase positive. It is facultative anaerobe, meaning it can survive both in aerobic and anaerobic conditions. It is non-motile, no, no flagella, nothing is there. It's non-sporing and occasionally capsulated, are, it is there, mostly not. It is around 1 micron in diameter. It is arranged in grape-like clusters. As I have explained, cell division occurs in multiple planes with the daughter cell remaining attached uh, together because of relative deficiency of the separation enzyme. Uh, the golden yellow pigmented colonies are produced on nutrient agar and beta hemolysis on the blood agar. While your general microbiology classes, you must have uh, been taught about the blood agar. Blood agar is a very regular, popular, common, enriched medium. So blood agar, the colonies where they grow, around the colonies, there is clearing of the medium. Clear, hello surrounding colonies is known as beta hemolytic, uh, beta hemolysis. So, uh, this one is the, as we have seen, this most virulent species among Staphylococci. Uh, it is producing infections and these infections are localized pyogenic infections in nature, localized in contrast to the, uh, the uh, streptococcal infections which are spreading in nature. An infection can be mild pyogenic local infection to life-threatening infections, systemic life-threatening infection in the humans. Then various virulence factors. The organism is pathogenic because of certain characters of it, certain properties of it. So these properties are, various properties are cell wall factors like uh, uh, say, uh, for example, this peptidoglycan, thecoic acid, cell surface adhesins, one of this is the clumping factors, the protein A, then various toxins are there, membrane active toxin, hemolysin, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, leukocidins are there, epidermolytic toxins which is also known as exfoliative toxin are also there. Enterotoxins are also there. Uh, it produces enterotoxin F, which is responsible for the food poisoning. Then there is a toxic shock syndrome toxin. So these, these factors are responsible for the uh, virulence of the organism. Uh, more virulent factors, it produces coagulase enzyme. Then Heat stable thermonuclease it produces, deoxy ribonuclease it produces, staphylokinase or also known as fibrolysin also produces. Some amount of hyaluronidase, lipase, and proteases are also produced. The pathogenesis of the organism starts from the colonization. Infection and colonization is little different in the sense the organisms enter the body, on the body or in the body. They grow there, divide there, but they do not cause disease, any problem, any significant infection. Then they are known as colonized. That is known as colonization. So colonization is there. And these colonization, colonized bacteria can be called normal flora also. So anterior nares, axilla and perineal skin. These three areas are very common areas where the colonization of the, the Staphylococcus aureus is there. Whenever there is minor abrasion or instrumentation, 
the or the organism adhered to the tissue enter from here and the invasion is helped by the enzymes otherwise also they from the nares they transmit by the by the sneezes etc by the droplet nuclei infection also the droplets come out of the body from the carrier they remains in the environment for 7 days or so and they can transfer to the susceptible tissue susceptible host then the evasion of the host mechanism is by antiphagocytic microcapsule and protein a inhibition of the leukocyte migration intracellular survival by formation of small colony variants and then the metastatic spread to various distant site by hematogenous spread is there clinical manifestations of the staphylococcus aureus staphylococcus aureus is one of the most common cause of various skin and soft tissue infections there is a long list and it has got a varied tissue involved also skin and soft tissue uh, musculoskeletal system then then the lungs may be involved the kidney may be involved the infection in the blood may be there so variety of organs systems may be affected by the staphylococcus at various times so here is the enumeration of some of the conditions this is the folliculitis as uh, infection of the hair follicle characterized by a pus point surrounding by the surrounded by the induration and erythema you must have seen this with the, your own self or your friends or the relatives folliculitis then furuncle also known as boil this is also one of the common we have experienced in childhood painful pustular lesion in hairy moist region due to infection of the hair follicle that extend to become true abscess then carbuncle severe painful lesion in the lower neck region extending to deeper subcutaneous tissue so if it is the lower neck region it will be labeled as uh, the carbuncle then the abscess collection of pus appears painful and swollen surrounded by erythema then mastitis and breast abscess in nursing mother can be there then impatigo it mainly occurs in children usually appear as a red sore on the face that burst and develops into honey colored crust then surgical site wound infections most common of surgical site infections is staphylococcus aureus surgical site infection wound infection means where the cut of the surgery during the surgical procedure is done on that cut lesion the cutting that which is see sutured there, there is infection then cellulitis may be there although the cellulitis is more due to due to staphylococcus the streptococcus but it can happen with this uh, the staphylococcus aureus also inflammation of the skin is there and subcutaneous tissue and around a wound or ulcer it is there cellulitis then hydranite adenitis suppurativa a recurrent follicular infection in areas rich in apocrine gland such as axilla then botryomycosis it is a mycetoma like condition characterized by subcutaneous tissue swelling sinuses and discharge containing granules this is something like the mycetoma foot in which there are discharge discharging sinuses then musculoskeletal infections there may be septic arthritis there may be osteomyelitis there may be pyomyositis where is skeletal muscle infection is there there may be abscess psoas abscess and epidural abscess then respiratory infections may be there the ventilator associated pneumonia vap also in short known as vap in adult this is a frequent happening of the hospital acquired infection in the icus septic pulmonary 
emboli may form. Post viral pneumonia may be there. Influenza virus enters into the body, does some damage, and then there is super added infection with the with the pneumococci, with the sorry, the staphylococci. Then the emphyma and pneumothorax. Then uh, pneumo, pneumatocele may be formed in neonates specially. Adding to the infection list of the staphylococci, the bacteremia and its complications means the infections in the blood or the infections, blood line, bloodstream infections by the staphylococcus aureus, sepsis or septic shock may be there. Central line associated bloodstream infection. This is another hospital acquired infection. Uh, in this both staph aureus and the coagulus negative staphylococci are the leading etiological agents. CLAB C in short known as. This is a, a hospital acquired infection. It is in the category of the hospital acquired infection. Then metastatic foci of infection involving kidney, joint, bone, and lung may be there. From the blood, it can locate into various areas of these organs, and then it may cause uh, pyogenic infection. Then infective endocarditis. The, the walls or the other areas of the endocardium may be infected and inflamed. Native valve endocarditis. Staphylococcus aureus is the most common cause of post prosthetic valve endocarditis. Intravenous drug use associated endocarditis. Right sided endocarditis. The Staphylococcus is the most common cause of nosocomial endocarditis associated with increased use of central line. Then urinary tract infections. Staphylococcus can cause UTI. Staphylococcal UTI and pyelonephritis usually occur secondary to bacteremia. Rarely, UTI is seen following instrumentation and insertion of catheter or implants. Then, further adding to the list, toxin-mediated illnesses. Staphylococcus, we have seen that Staphylococcus secretes toxins, various toxins. So, such toxins may produce disease. Uh, toxic shock syndrome. Toxic shock syndrome is a, is a, is a, is a serious disease where, uh, where the, this toxin, toxic shock syndrome toxin accumulates into the body from a site which is not, uh, which is, which is far away from the direct body and uh, it was initially related to the sanitary tampons, but now its incidence has decreased. Then food poisoning, relatively common cause of food poisoning. The food handlers um, can introduce the, the staphylococcus in the food if they are uh, their carriers, especially the nasal carriers. And then from there, if the food is not warmed again, before eating, they can uh, they can uh, they can give rise to preformed toxin and cause food poisoning. Then a staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome can also happen. Then there is a MRSA. MRSA means Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. CA means community acquired, community associated. So the the MRSA is a problem. So infections in the community or in the hospital by MRSA is a serious problem these days. So MRSA can cause skin and soft tissue infections, and the most common uh, these are the most common sites for the the colonization of this. Staphylococcal strains of MRSA variety. About 5% of these stains are invasive and can be life threatening. And examples of these include 
नेक्रोटाइजिंग निमोनिया सेप्सिस विद वाटर हाउस फ्रेडिशन सिंड्रोम और परफ्यूरा फलमिनस स्टेफालोको का रेयर कॉज ऑफ रेयर कॉज मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज पेंडिंग ऑफ कस देन नेक्रोटाइजिंग फेसियाइटिस स्टेफालोकोकस एंड स्टेप्टोकस पायोजेनिस आर द कॉमन पॉजिटिव एजेंट्स दीज आर दी the clinical lesions pictures the region this is staphylococcus polytitis you can see a elevation here and there is a there is a there is a area where it will puncture and after puncture the ruptured uh, uh, ruptured abscess look like and there is cellulitis surrounding the wound ulcer epidemiology the Staphylococcus aureus, as we have discussed in the earlier slide, is a common flora of people. At least 20 to 40 percent healthy population are carriers, and these carriers may be persistent carriers or transient carriers. The sites where the carriers is there. is anterior nares oropharynx followed by the abraded skin vagina axilla and perineum these colonized colonization sites are the reservoir for the future then the rate of colonization is higher among insulin dependent diabetics hiv infected patients patients undergoing hemodialysis infection injection drug users and individuals with skin damage what a surprise these people are uh, are colonized in higher amount and they are more susceptible overall staphylococcus aureus is a leading cause of healthcare associated infections then laboratory diagnosis of staphylococcus aureus infections uh, although it is relatively simpler but at times it is difficult to demonstrate the presence of the staphylococcus aureus i hope you remember my advice for you to keep always in mind the cox postulates about the role of the microorganism in the disease and the establishments of their causative role so staphylococcus aureus is a organism which is gram positive pokkine clusters so what is expected anywhere from which a sample is taken and staphylococcus aureus is suspected when you take the sample do a gram staining then you will see gram positive cocaine clusters along with the plus cells many plus cells will be there and in between there will be clusters of the gram positive cocaine that is nothing but the staphylococcus and most likely it is aureus then second the, the you remember the this one is the first cox postulate direct microscopy we are establishing the the association of the organism with the lesion then second is isolation remember my five words cox postulate uh, hmm. association isolation inoculation re isolation and corresponding antibodies so this is the first one that is the direct microscopy this is second one the isolation in pure culture that is culture so this organism is relatively easy to grow non fastidious it doesn't need very exacting requirement so it grows in nutrient agar it grows in blood agar it grows in some selective media also like the mannitol salt agar salt milk agar or ludlum medium also on nutrient agar it gives rise to golden yellow pigmented colonies and the colonies on the blood agar usually show a narrow zone of beta hemolysis in my earlier slides i have described beta hemolysis means there is a complete clearing zone around the colony 
then when you take culture when you take spear from this cultured colonies then you will see gram positive cocaine clusters so this is establishment of the two cock first two cox postulates they are enough to do to give the diagnosis this is almost if these two are there or either is there it's almost sure that stephanococcus is there in the lesion biochemical tests are sometime needed sometime there is confusion the the clusters are not that conspicuous or the colonies are not that typical so that time to rule out the streptococci we do catalase test if we discuss catalase positive surely it is not uh, surely it is not uh, streptococcus then we go for coagulase test two types of the coagulase test are there slight slide coagulase test and tube coagulase test so slide is simple test make a suspension of the organism from the colonies make a drop of plasma mix a, add a drop of plasma mix it and you will see coagulum formation similar things are done in the tube there are two types of the coagulase free coagulase and bound coagulase the slide is able to detect the bound coagulase and the tube coagulase is able to detect free coagulase if any of these two is positive then it is staphylococcus aureus or you can label it gram positive coagulase positive staphylococci also coagulase positive staphylococci then protein a detection may also be there that will help in the identification then there are automated systems in the laboratories these days so vitec such system is uh, there in our laboratory also so vitec system is a automatic system if you put the organism in that it will do the the biochemical test and will identify it then this this third step is the anti bio biogram testing anti microbial susceptibility testing we will test in the disc in the plate by the disc mostly there are many methods of anti microbial susceptibility testing so mostly we are doing kirby boyer the disc diffusion method in our laboratory so this will be placed in the in the in the muller hinta nagar and we will see the microbial microbial susceptibility testing so that is done so that we know to which drug it is sensitive to which drug it is this is the the microscopy the gram picture this is the oil immersion this is high power you can see small clusters this is from colonies colonies you can see nothing else but the gram positive cocaine cluster this is from the sample of course in this particular sample not many pus cells are there but the other material of the of the sample the fibers are seen this is also known as direct smear and this is known as culture smear this is the culture plates this is nutrient agar showing the golden yellow pigmented colonies these colonies are opaque small 1 to 2 uh, mm in size this is the inoculation this is the primary area this is secondary area this is well actually well this is primary streaking this is secondary streaking this is tertiary streaking this is quaternary streaking this is further streaking so these these streakings are done to ultimately isolate the colonies in this manner you can see discrete colonies here same way this is the blood agar and this is beta hemolysis around the colonies you can show a clearing halo around the colonies this is beta hemolysis this is the the test the coagulase and the catalase test this is tube coagulase test uh, i am sorry not the catalase test this is two types of the coagulase test 
this is tube coagulase test and this is the slide coagulase test. You can see the clumping forming, this white, white, white shown in the picture. They are the clumps. Their clump coagulum is formed because of the enzyme coagulase. In this, the coagulum has formed this liquid. It is liquid here and this becomes solidified. If you tilt the test tube, it will not, not, uh, not uh, flow. It will stick to the test tube. Then treatment of the Staph aureus infections. Normally, they are sensitive to penicillin. So that is why the drug of choice for the Staph infections is penicillin G, crystalline penicillin. But then there is possibility of the resistance to the drugs and methicillin is a is a is a representative penicillin of the uh, penicillinase producing penicillin resistant methicillin so uh, if the, it is methicillin this, uh, sensitive then it you can go for the uh, uh, nephilin cloxacillin and if it is methicillin resistant, that is if they are MRSA, then you have to go with the vancomycin. So according to the methicillin sensitivity, you can choose the treatment. Then empirical treatment, if MRSA status is not known, if you have not put MRSA, you have just come to the knowledge that the organism which has caused the infection is Staphylococcus aureus, then you can go for empirical treatment. So, vancomycin with or without an aminoglycoside. Uh, this vancomycin is indicated only if the risk is high and condition is serious. For example, cardiac implant. So, the use of the antibiotic, whether uh, vancomycin or the simple treatment be given depends upon the, the status of the patient. In oral therapy for skin and soft tissue infections, sensitive to methicillin, organisms will go for with the cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, and cephalexin and cefazolin. And if it is MRSA, clindamycin, cotrimoxazole, doxycycline, linezolate can be used. If it is topical, application is required. Now, the drug resistance in Staphylococcus aureus. Drug resistance in drug staphylococcus is a big problem in the current uh, medical services. There is a enzyme which is known as beta lactamase or penicillinase. This enzyme breaks down the beta lactam ring, which is the constitutional ring of certain antibiotics. So when these enzymes which are produced by the organism, they break the ring, then the, the, the drug, the, the penicillin, uh, becomes ineffective. And this resistance is plasmid coated. Plasmid, you must be knowing, is an is a extra chromosomal tiny ringlet of DNA, which is independent of the division of the, of the bacteria. And this is transferred between Staphylococcus aureus strains by transduction. And 90%, more than 90% strains of S aureus produce this, uh, this, uh, uh, this enzyme. This resistance can be overcome by addition of beta-lactamase inhibitors. So beta lactive enzyme is produced by the bacteria and this uh, beta lactam is inhibited by certain drugs like clavulanic acid and sulbectum. So if with the antibiotic, other antibiotic like empocillin, this clavulanic acid or sulbectum is added, then the effect of the beta lactamase is neutralized. So the, the beta lactamase uh, inhibitor, clavulanic acid plus empocillin drug uh, will be effective in the in the resistant Staphylococcus aureus. This resistance is produced also 
by the alteration in the penicillin binding protein PBP and this is shown by MRSA strains of Staphylococcus aureus. We have seen MRSA strains are the methicillin uh, resistant Staph aureus. So this PB penicillin, penicillin binding uh, protein producer Staphylococci are known as the, the MRSA methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So this is because of the alteration in the uh, penicillin binding protein and this is the, those are known as MRSA methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus <coughs> and this is because of the gene uh, MAC A gene. So MAC A gene is responsible for the modification in the protein binding protein, protein penicillin binding protein. So altered uh, penicillin binding protein is PBP2A. So this instead of this protein, this protein is there. So penicillin binding protein is essential protein needed for cell wall synthesis of bacteria. So beta lactam drugs bind and inhibit this protein inhibiting the cell wall synthesis. So beta lactam drug mechanism of action is this beta lactam like the cephalosporins. <coughs> so the alteration of the penicillin binding protein molecule altered molecule PBP2A uh, which is there in MRSA strains they have got less affinity for beta lactam antibiotics. So they will not be able to bind to the to the bacteria hence they will not be effective against them so that is why mrsa strains are resistant to all beta lactam antibiotics so because of the mrsa the outbreaks can happen in certain conditions of poor hygiene close contact contaminated materials and individuals with damaged skins so individual of damaged skin there will be outbreak of the MRSA. Then there are classifications, typing of the uh, MRSA on the basis of the gene. There are strains are expressed from type 1 to type 6, type 1, 2, 3 and type 4, 5, 6. So type 4, 5, 6 is community acquired community associated and type 1, 2, 3 is hospital associated. Community acquired are usually more virulent and express several toxins such as penton valentine toxin. In comparison, the hospital acquired, they are more resistant to the drugs but their virulence is relatively low. The MRSA acquired in the community, they cause invasive skin and soft tissue infections like necrotizing fasciitis. The hospital acquired, they usually cause perioperative wound infection in hospitals and nosocomial outbreaks in which the hospital staffs are the major carriers, uh, the MRSA subtype 1, 2, 3 are responsible. Now, how to detect the MRSA, whether the strain is MRSA or not, methicillin resistant or not. So, antibiotic susceptibility test is done, but then methicillin testing is not that easy. So, a surrogate marker of cefoxetine disc or oxacillin disc are used. And these discs can be used, disc of the cefoxetine is used or oxacillin is used in MIC method. This cefoxetine disc is used in the Kirby Boyer method. So this is one method for one method, this is for another method. And these are surrogate markers, surrogate markers are the, surrogates are the, the 
the things which can be used in substitute. So in substitute of the methicillin, these two can be used. Or the detection of MAC A gene by PCR or the latex agglutination test for the detection of the protein, penicillin binding protein 2A. These four methods for the detection of the uh, MRSA are there. Then treatment of MRSA infections, vancomycin. Vancomycin is the drug of choice for MRSA. Alternative drugs can also be used. There were the, the ticoplanin, linezolid, deptomycin, telavencin, and cunipristine and delphopristine. These drugs can so also be used. Linezolid is useful in skin and soft tissue infections, while deptomycin is indicated for endocarditis. And this is not effective in pneumonia. However, when the infection is non-life threatening, not very serious, the other drugs, the general broad spectrum drugs like tetracycline, erythromycin, cotrimoxazole are also effective to, to, to some extent. They can also be used. And antibiotic susceptibility testing before uh, is used before an alternative drug is used. All beta lactam drugs should be avoided because those drugs will not be effective at all. However, fifth generation cephalosporins, they can be useful to some extent. Ceftobiprol, ceftarolin, and ceftolozen, etc. After the problem of MRSA, there started other one more problem vrsa or resistance to vancomycin for the mrsa drug of choice is vancomycin but then uh, erroneous and overuse erroneous and overuse of vancomycin has led to the emergence of resistance to vancomycin say microorganisms are very small tiny organisms with simpler mechanisms they uh, it is not very hard for them to acquire resistance. So they develop in due course of time resistance against such substances for their existence and survival. <laughs> I say sometimes in a, in a joking manner, they are also has got a right and power. So anyways, uh, there are low grade and high grade resistance. When it is low grade, it is known as VSA, vancomycin intermediate staph aureus. When it is high grade, it is known as vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus. The this division of VICA, VISA, and and VRSA is on the basis of the MIC. So when the values are four to eight, it is VRSA and when it is more than 6 microgram per ml, it is uh, VRSA and when it is 4 to 8, it is VISA. However, in the current findings, it is seen that whenever there is a vancomycin resistance uh, is found more than 1 microgram <coughs> per one microgram per ml, then you should not use vancomycin because it is frequently observed with treatment failures. Resistance in resistance, resistance amount, VSA intermediately sensitive are more frequent than VRSA. VRSA is a little higher side, more resistant. VRSA mechanism is by the gene and VSA mechanism is by increase in the cell wall thickness of Staphylococcus aureus and this uh, van a gene van a gene is vancomycin uh, a gene vancomycin uh, resistance gene is acquired from enterococcus pecalis by horizontal conjugal transfer the bacteria exchange with each other the important materials 
the plasmid is exchanged between enterococcus fecalis which is a commensal flora of the intestine and other areas and this has this organism has given the gene to the staphylococcus aureus now there is another concept fitness cost phenomenon this acquisition of van gene is often associated with compensatory mutation uh, in the genes responsible for survival which results in a reduced fitness of staphylococcus aureus so what happens whenever the staph acquires the van gene there is essentially some more mutations in the genes which are essential for the survival so the fitness reduces so fitness is compromised so this is known as fitness cost phenomena this fitness cost phenomena is not that commonly observed in mrsa it is more commonly observed in uh, versa and visa and this explains the very less prevalence of versa which is less than 0.1% in comparison to mrsa which is 30 to 40% treatment the varsa treatment should be should be based on the susceptibility testing and the drugs which can be effective after the antibiogram they can be linezolid uh, telavancin daptomycin cunipristine and delphopristine control measures of the uh, varsa and mrsa so varsa is not screen but mrsa is screen many a times so screening of the carriers among the hospital staff is done whenever there is a outbreak and mannitol oxaliciclin agar is a medium which is good for the selectively grow the mrsa so on a plate many strains are streaks and that which is which is oxaliciclin resistant or the mrsa will grow only others will not grow treatment of the carriers topical 2% mupirocin for nasal carriers and chlorhexidine body baths for the skin carriers is recommended also the antibiotic misuse in the hospital has to be has to be stopped to control proper infection control measures should be ensured the hand hygiene is the most effective way to prevent hospital infection spread and isolation of the patient and other contact precautions are to be executed nicely earlier we have seen that on the basis of coagulase test all the staphylococci can be divided into two coagulase negative and coagulase positive in general coagulase positive are pathogenic more pathogenic and coagulase negative are either non pathogenic or less pathogenic in short we call it cons also coagulase negative staphylococci cons the earlier names are staphylococcus albus staphylococcus epidermidis staphylococcus saprophyticus we will see where these cons are involved in the human disease staphylococcus epidermidis as the name is suggesting epidermidis means it is living on the epidermis it is normal flora of the skin oropharynx and vagina and when the coagulase negative staphylococci are isolated from the clinical samples 75 to 80% are staphylococcus epidermidis its pathogenic role is enhanced in the presence of prosthetic valves prosthetic devices pathogenesis of the staph epidermidis infections involved two steps one 
initial adhesion to prosthetic device. The surface adhesions of the organism bind to the host serum tissue constituent. Normally, the fibrogen or fibronectin coated on the implanted prosthetic surfaces becomes the attractant for these binding uh, sites adhesions on the organism. Then after colonization of step epidermidis on the walls, they produce extracellular polysaccharide material which is known as glycocalyx or slime, slime layer. And this facilitates formation of a protective biofilm on the device surface. As a result of the biofilm formed on the prosthetic devices, there are manifestations of the infections of the endocarditis uh, with the insertion of valvular uh, prosthesis and Ventricular shunt infections are also because of this uh, biofilm only. Also, staph epidermitis is a common cause of, cause of stitch abscesses. Then, uh, this organism, if staph epidermitis, is coagulose negative, but phosphatase test is positive, while the, uh, the staph aureus is both phosphatase test positive and coagulase test positive. So, there, there is one of the differences in the biochemical test of the two organisms, Steph aureus and epidermidis. Then recently, Steph saprophyticus, Steph uh, lugdunensis and Steph schaeferi, these have also become important and Steph saprophytus is a, is a relatively common cause of urinary tract infection, especially in sexually active young women. Recently, the other two have been associated with more serious infections, native valve endocarditis and osteomyelitis. Their enhanced pathogenesis may be due to expression of virulent factors, clumping factors. Therefore, they exhibit positive slight coagulase test and lipase which are usually absent in, in, in other cons, other coagulose negative staphylococci. So, that is mostly all about the staphylococcal infections, staphylococci, aureus and epidermidis and the saprophyticus and the other new. Uh, hope uh, you must have liked and enjoyed this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, thank you very much. And good day.